Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Now here's a video which a lot of you have been requesting for and it's basically the app that has helped our YouTube channel become a lot more pro if that's a good word to use. A lot of our recent lessons use notation and I am not a great notation writer. As you see in my handwritten notes, it's just the chord charts which I draw and little bit of rhythm notation. So I rely on a professional tool for scoring out my music, my arrangements, as well as the exercises that we share with you folks on our YouTube channel. All of this uses a free and open source notation app called MuseScore, which allows you to do some incredible things. You can do choral arrangements, orchestral arrangements, full-on band arrangements, or just simple piano stuff, or just when you're transcribing music, you're listening to something, you just want to put it out on paper and also have the ability to play it back. That's exactly what an app can do compared to, you know, a pen and paper, which also has its charm. I would imagine. So in this lesson, we are going to look at Muse Score 101. First of all, we look at the setup, how to get the your hardware, your MIDI keyboards, your audio interfaces all set up and hooked up well. Then we look at how to actually use the software, how to find everything, what are the preferences. And I don't want to make this a video where I just show you the shortcuts and leave it at that. I'm going to compose a melody with you. I would encourage you to do it with me or else watch it and then observe the video, especially from the middle stages onwards, where we are going to make our own song together and not just make one melody. We are going to add some drums. We are going to add some guitars. Pretty much whatever comes in my head. I wish you were there live to give me your suggestions. Maybe you can join some of the classes at Nathaniel. We use this software a lot for arrangement, orchestration and just to transcribe. So transcription is where you listen and you notate. So you listen to some music and immediately notate it. So that's where I'm coming from, from a MuseCore perspective. I've always relied on it for arranging parts for a choir for working with a small horn section or a string quartet so I can give them individual parts. Any idea which comes in my head that I really like and I don't want to forget, so I put it down. And obviously, as an educator, this is very crucial. So first of all, let's figure out how to install MuseScore. There are two things that might confuse you. There's MuseScore.com. So what's really cool about the MuseScore.com ecosystem is you have courses and you have scores. So to search for sheet music, all you have to do is go here and maybe type something like this. A twinkle twinkle little star which I always tend to type and you can go difficulty level advanced you can do official scores and then you get something which the great Mozart himself composed so if you want a version where you can play the files what you want to do is go to format hit interactive otherwise you're just going to get the PDF download which is also cool so you go to interactive go there and then you have this entire le learning interface where you can play the song and learn it see the keys move by you have different views if you're struggling with reading like me where I'm going to go now is, and where you need to go to install the app is from musco.org so once you go to the home page musco.org you'll see the free download you can install it for your respective OS and it'll guide you it'll tell you the latest version for that OS and it also tells you why musescore and what you can use it for it's a professional music notation software software it's completely free no limitations easy to use yet powerful i can vouch for this it's open source so the user community will keep coming up with plugins that you can keep bringing into the software to make your workflow more and more efficient input via midi keyboard so you can you don't have to just go use your mouse and keyboard and draw the notes you can input it from your respective keyboard you can also transfer it to other programs via music xml which is a standard standard music code you can also use traditional midi so it's a standard notation software and they update it very often as you can see musco 4.4 is now available it was updated two days ago and the updates just happened really fast i was on 4.3 like 
two days ago and I just changed. So first of all, let's open the software. As you'll know, it works in any OS. It'll work on Windows. It'll work on Mac. And it'll also work on Linux. So it'll work on all sorts of operating systems as you can see here. So make sure you know which version you're downloading. Then it'll work smoothly. Okay. It also comes in this package called Muse Hub, which has a lot of other software. You can get Musco Studio which is what it's called now you can get audacity which is a recording software you can get staff pad tone bridge for guitars you have a lot of sounds which you can add to the party you have a lot of effects as well which can make it pretty much like a daw on its own so i'm just going to go to home then i'm going to go to scores then i'm going to go to some score uh, for example, Chaotic Arpeggios, which is one of our recent videos. So here, you're going to see the score. You can move it around. You can also zoom. You, basic stuff, you can zoom in and out, which is convenient, of course. You can also do it with Command plus minus for Mac and command usually changes to control on PC. This is your note input toolbar. So what this will allow you to do is choose the types of notes that you would like to enter. Do you want to enter a 64th note, which I don't recommend, 16th note, uh, eighth note and you'll find the shortcut to its right in brackets as you can see half note the shortcut is two. So if I want to input a half note here, uh, I just have to change it and it becomes a half note in the score as well. <clears throat> so you need to be careful with that because it will change your score if you have something selected. So that's your half note. Then you can do your dotted notes, whole note. You, this is called an augmentation dot. You can add a rest. You can do double flats. You can do normal flats. Make it natural if the key signature has uh, sharps and flats already. Make it a sh uh, sharp if it d doesn't have one. You can even do double sharps. You can add a tie. The shortcut is T. You can even do slurs for your phrases. And then you can have a lot of your uh, accentuation markers like marcato, accent, tenuto, staccato, which means very short and there are uh, shortcuts for everything. You can even do your basic triplets or tuplets pretty easily. You can even flip the direction of notes. You can add certain notes to certain voices. So it's great for choral arrangements. Uh, and you can even add your own stuff to the toolbar. You can add whatever you want to this particular toolbar. You can customize it. So the other thing I'd like you to consider is if you don't have it show up on the left side, you'll have your instruments as you keep flowing through the score. You can add multiple instruments. So you have your instruments layer here if not you can view it either using the function key f7 or by just pressing instruments there we go <clears throat> you also have your palettes palettes by default it will be there so palettes allows you to control which clef you want to work with treble clef bass clef alto clef tenor clefs even guitar tabs or even regular old percussion so you can do drum notation you can do uh, <clears throat> bongo notation, you can do all kinds of percussion. You can even do guitar tabs, banjo tabs, bass tabs, ukulele tabs. Pretty much a support for all the instruments out there. Then we have key signatures, which are very self-explanatory. It's designed, it's written pretty well along the lines of the circle of fifths. G, D, A, E, B and all of their relative minors neatly put there. Then you even have the flat scales and obviously you can add to it or remove it or customize it. Then you have your time signatures. The usual ones are there. But as you can see, I've put some of my, so not custom ones. It just so happened that the song needed like a 31 by 8 or a 7 by 4. So you can add that manually. You can create a time signature. Uh, you have your tempo markers, which are very important, which you put at the beginning of the song. Is it a crotchet, which is measuring the tempo, or is it a dotted note? In this case, a dotted note because it's a 6 by 8 song. Then you have swing versus straight. You can get your audio to play back swing and straight as well. It just happens automatically. And then you have some rare things which you might or might not uh, want to come towards. Tempo I've showed you. 
pitch here and there you can change the octave of the notes that you view so what you see will be easier to read but what you hear would be the higher option it will go above the fifth line or below the fifth line which as you some of you know the ledger lines are very tough to read so you can use those altered pitch signs if you want to call it that you have your accidentals here i prefer to use them here text markers i use a lot so i just drag a text marker and you can call it whatever you want you also have uh, chord text so you can put chord names and get the chords to play you can get your symbols to play which is really cool so i'm going to show you all this when we build our score from scratch this is just to show you an interface so stay tuned till the end because we are going to build it from scratch then we have the keyboard layout just primarily for piano players so you have your pedal usage pedal on pedal where should the pedal be pressed and lifted and then you have your repeat signs if you want to compact your score save paper save the environment which all of us want to do i'm sure and that's about your palettes and then you have properties which you might want to come to from time to time so i usually stick with that and just so you know you have a mixer as well so whatever instrument you put you can put it down here and uh, we'll get to that later you even have all your parts which are written out and you can ex you can look at a lot more things you have your plugins which you can download from the user community uh, you have a variety of tools like if you want to transpose you have a lot of options you can transpose chromatically to key by interval diatonically you can transpose the chord symbols as well it's really cool very advanced transpose toolkit you can add lyrics you can add song lyrics so i'm not going to get into all of that rather i'm just going to give you the most important settings to get you started on the app so that will be now your preferences so in windows if i'm not mistaken you have to go to edit and you will find preferences on mac you go to the <clears throat> name of the software and you'll see preferences the shortcut will be command comma so you have all of these options i'm just going to walk you through a few of them general you can just leave as it is however when the program starts do you want it to start empty or do you want to start with a specific score that you have been working on all week and so on and so forth then your appearance i usually prefer the dark mode you can decide as you wish canvas you can adjust it i have not bothered much here it's fine the way it is auto save might be very important you can auto save either every 5 minutes or if you want to be a bit more cautious you can make this even 3 minutes or 2 minutes you can even save it to a cloud <clears throat> uh, every 10 saves it goes to the cloud which is very useful uh, note input is a, a debatable place to be so i'll just uh, talk about this i would tick all of this uh, advanced to next note on key release for midi this is very useful however by default musco will play notes when editing so when you play notes when editing sometimes if your keyboard already has a sound or if you've connected it to a midi device i don't want to hear it from both the apps so i generally turn it off and even play chord when editing play chord symbol when editing i prefer all these off but you can leave it on and then if it annoys you you can turn it off uh <clears throat> voice assignment i leave as it is scores i leave as it is this is extremely important audio and midi so audio and midi will basically be you have which is your audio device that you want to listen from uh, is it your apple airpods which you plugged in or your bluetooth speakers uh, or is it your existing computer uh, setup or is it your audio interface in my case i'm just going to go with system default and usually that will work otherwise you can choose exactly what you want make your buffer size as less as possible so if i'm on my zen studio playback which is my audio interface i would like my audio to play back as soon as possible so it could be 128 but if your computer is not so fast you can make it 256 or 512 i would start with 512 so adjust your buffer size then we have midi input this is very very important of course Uh, i wish in a future feature of musco they could allow us to enter from a lot more midi devices than just one but right now it allows me to input so you can actually play the notes on your midi keyboard and it's going to uh, 
notate it sometimes live you have settings where you can just play with the metronome so i'm just going to choose my ck series port 1 and if ever you want you can send the midi output to another device which i don't want to do now so if you have a cog nano control studio like the one i have you can assign any of these buttons to any of these uh, note input features so uh, we i won't get into that assignment right now you can figure that out on your own by hitting assign midi mapping import we leave as it is shortcuts is where you might want to find a lot of things to change for example if you type the word duration which key would be used to assign a 16th note or an 8th note or whatever you can set that up here you can even have multiple shortcuts for the same note sometimes i like to use the numeric keypad numbers versus the other numbers then you have update folders folders is also important where do you want to store your score i usually uh, sometimes will save my scores into icloud if i'm working on another computer so then it syncs better with all my devices so you can decide where you would like to store your scores advanced you can leave it as it is advanced is usually scary for for me to look at so you can access the braille panel for visually impaired users so if you know anyone who you'd like to get to use an app like this you can always share this with them because it supports braille you'll see that show up in the score as you're editing and yeah you have a lot of options you have a lot of features that will help pretty much any musician out there to get notation going for them right so let's now open up a brand new score uh, i'm just going to hit new score under scores and what do i want to do first since a lot of us on this channel i guess play piano so let's choose an instrument and let's be biased towards our instrument i guess but don't worry we'll experiment and figure out a lot of other things along the way so piano grand piano and then don't hit done until it's actually done so always hit next and now you can decide your score your tempo and all that so what's going to be the scale of my composition i guess d uh time signature let's keep it simple 4 by 4 uh, you can change it obviously you can change the numerator and denominator numerator is basically any uh positive integer and the denominator will be a power of uh, 2 so 2 par 0 2 par 1 2 par 2 2 par 3 like that that standard music theory which you will find in any context then you have your tempo i would like to tick show tempo marking in the score and uh, let's select 90 beats per minute shall we i just like 90 measures you can leave this as it is un unless you have a pickup measure if you have something like for example happy birthday to you right happy birth so happy is before the song starts happy birth and birth is at the beat one so in cases like that you might want to do a pickup measure so i'm not i'm going to leave that away then what's the title what shall we call this i guess my first score okay composer arranger i don't know nathaniel school of music <clears throat> that's the name of our school by the way uh subtitle what shall we write should we leave it blank or <clears throat> shall we do orchestral mini or something like that lyricist no one let's not bother and once you're absolutely done and there's no next left to do you hit done and then your score opens up you can zoom in and as you can see by default muse score will just give you these semi brief rests or whole note rests so what's going to happen is you change those rests to notes as you see as you see fit basically by default it's going to be silence and then you add notes to the party so now let's start adding some notes so i'm just going to maybe sing a basic melody like a ta na speak the key of d yeah two we are on d major right two sharps but if you'd like to change the scale you can just select whichever other key signature you want and it'll just happen i'm just going to go back to d so let me come up with a melody and then let's notate that to ru 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 to ru 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 so that's basically 
A F sharp D B D G F sharp E D C sharp A D now this has to come in as notation so how do we enter notes in musco three ways to enter notes in musco first of all with your computer keyboard whatever you have which you use for typing purposes just by clicking this pen or pencil icon and you will get a note value which is selectable here so if i want to select a crotchet or a, a quarter note i select it here i can use my shortcuts as well 4 for quarter 3 a 2 for minim 1 for semi brief uh 60 6 for 16th notes and the list goes on i can hit a dot if ever i want a dotted augmentation okay and a few more things like tied notes will be t so i'll walk you through the shortcuts so if this is enabled if the pencil is enabled then you can just go select your note value and just look at the score and write whatever you want so this is g d f sharp a now i want a minim so i do the minim shortcut and f sharp two minims and maybe one semi brief at the very end so this is one way of inputting notes now the other way if you like to do it with a basic with your computer keyboard itself you can choose the note value in this case crotchets and you can just enter the notes a d f sharp b i want the lower b i'll show you that later e a d it's just going up and down so when you enter notes this way the the downside is you don't you can't control which octave they are now let's say you have entered this note and it's a crotchet you wanted it to be a minim so you can just select the note just go here touch select the note and press minim but the problem here is these notes are insanely high if i play this back that's very that's a weird melody if you ask me so what i would then do is move this note a d f sharp so i can drag this down a d f sharp and maybe i just want to drag all these notes down but before dragging there's a nice shortcut that you can remember command up arrow down arrow that basically lowers the pitch of whatever you you have selected it could be an entire bar a set of notes or even a single note you are reducing it or increasing it by a single octave so that's the downside of inputting notes from a computer keyboard because you you don't have a control over the octave but the ultimate control where you can also gain a lot of speed and accuracy would be if you've connected a midi controller like this or any keyboard it could be the most basic yamaha casio keyboard or a 32 key midi controller whatever it may be if you've connected that and if you've already installed the midi drivers and if it already works for your daw the same procedure will work for muse score and remember i already showed you that in the setup so i have enabled my ck series port 1 and what this will allow me to do i have to go to a point of interest hit the n key n stands for notes i guess and yes i can see the note show up with my mouse but i can also enter the specific note and this might be a lot faster especially if you want to enter chords now if i have to do a chord let's say e e minor check that out it happened instantly uh, f sharp minor g major now you guys may be thinking how is this f sharp minor well i'm in the key of d major so this is has to be f sharp and this has to be c sharp right so <clears throat> f sharp minor so inputting chords i always recommend using the normal midi keyboard but if you want to input singular notes then sometimes i might just use the computer keyboard or you can use the a combination so let me just in input the notes of the melody which i sung uh, i hope i sang the right one earlier it was something like la 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 something like that so let's see how that goes la so it's a minim in the beginning 
this is one two three four one two three four so one two one 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 let's see how that goes so first note was a so i'm going to choose the crotchets and let's do it with my computer keyboard for a start so i'm going to choose minim because the first note is minim so a now crotchet go to the crotchet chart f sharp d now i'm going to use my uh, uh, midi keyboard and just do crotch b d g f sharp okay and let me just do escape because i want to select this entire bar and move it down an octave let's see how we are so far okay and let's finish this off with something like la da 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 okay so crotchet 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 semi brief whole note let's see how that goes again now any input mechanism let's now use the the manual option e d c sharp a and now semi brief which will be d where's d there's d yeah let's play this back f sharp d b d g f sharp e d c sharp a d now i might be thinking okay some of these notes or maybe all of these notes are in the lower octave so let me select them select them and how do i go from one bar selection to the next i just hit shift and do command up arrow to take it up an octave so we've got um <clears throat> we've got a decent melody going right uh, i am now tempted to kind of add a little bit more to this because it's tending to be a bit interesting so let's just build this bar by bar so that's some dotted notes so if i do dotted it'll be four crotchets uh, shortcut with a dot so i'm just going to use my keyboard one and two and quaver Da 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 da. So da na 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 na. Maybe that. So what's that? Tan ta tan ta ta da tam pa. So I start with a quaver. That'll be pam crotchet pa. Quaver again. Tan crotchet again. And then two quavers to finish off. Da da. Let's see if this sounds decent. And then let's like uh, tail it off and finish off our track, which will be maybe la la, just two long notes. Maybe mm, what shall we do? E A lower A, I guess. So da da, and then da da re 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 da ru long note. Do 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 do. So let's end with some quavers. That'll be. As you can see, it's okay to enter even from your computer keyboard. End with a semi brief. Yeah. Now you may look at this and think, "Ha! It doesn't look so organized." Maybe I want to see the first four. So it's very, very easy. You can go here, hit return key or enter. it just makes the score look a lot neater this could be part 1 this could be part 2 and i'm just going to clear out the remaining bar so to do that select the bar select the end you can right click delete measures or the shortcut could be basically command backspace there we go so it becomes a neat arrangement of sorts uh we don't have the left hand right because the left hand is prompting us with this semi brief rest to add something so why don't we just compose a chord progression so on top of the, l- let's play the melody first and by the way you can play this with a metronome if that helps you We are on ninety BPM. You can change that any time you wish. Yeah, and let's put put in some chords. 
So maybe here I'm going to put in a D major because it's a tonic chord. So to do that, you select a note, do Command K or Control K, and you'll get yourself a chord. If you want to hear how the chord sounds, you can go to this uh, gear icon and hit chord, play chord symbols. And see if you like that. Mm, mm, maybe a G major. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get in some A seventh now, a dominant. I'm thinking a D sus four would work well here. So you can it it supports almost all the chords out there. I think I'll go with a two five one, and E minor will be the two of the D minor D major scale. Two A na do do, and then coming to a D. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that sounds. Maybe a G something. G major 6 should work well. Mm -hmm. Maybe a normal A. And then an A7. End with a D sus four. Let's see how this sounds. We'll probably suspend that four to the <coughs> resolution later okay so now why don't we just add in some piano left hand arpeggios so to enter notes with the keyboard you can just select your octave do the note entry mode and go for it pum, pum, pum. oh I, i'm entering crotchets i prefer faster quavers so let's see how that works note as you can see it's pretty real time and then maybe let's do some block uh, one two block minims perhaps so da, da. I'm also gonna mute the chord so I just hear the arpeggio let's see if we like this let's do some broken chords that'll be fun and let's hold it down with minims perhaps so let's have some fun with the very last bar the melody is going this way so maybe we can do a counterpoint to the melody perhaps which will be so the harmony could do something like and then end with some sus chords. For the sus chords, I prefer using my computer keyboard. Da, da. Let's see how this works. So on top of this, we can start layering a few more instruments by going to instruments and just hitting simple button add. So what shall we add? Perhaps a flute under woodwind, something up top. Let's see how that will work. Uh, flute will be on top of piano, but I can always readjust it and put the piano up flute, but I'm preferring this. So first thing I want to start with the flute is bring in some rhythmic intensity. Uh, one... Maybe just divide all this into eighth notes. And only at these eighth notes, we want a D. So D, 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 D. And I want the flute to play some nice staccato. So maybe select all that and just make it staccato. Let's see how that works. Okay, and I want the flute to play one octave higher. 
then what it is so i can go to palettes and i can choose a clef a different clef either now whatever i see went up the octave or i can choose this clef where now whatever i see went down the octave but it's actually playing higher so i can transpose this higher and it'll actually be very high d but i'm reading it as a more readable d so you could access your clefs under palettes so for the next bar we can do something like ta na 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 ta ra 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 so it starts off beat pa ba ba pa ba ba so give a quaver rest pa wa and and then just do quaver pa ba pa ba ba pa pam pa ba 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 so that will be a quaver pam pa ba 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 so now followed by two fast semi quavers ta ra tang ta ra 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 and two quavers ta ra let's see how this works pam 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 pa ra ba ra pa ra ba ba what do we do here i think bring in that same staccato idea but instead of doing the power of copy paste is is right there so d can be an a perhaps pum 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 now what do we do there uh, at the very end it's a d sus right so ta ra 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 ta ra 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 just some uh, <clears throat> upper melody so i'll just use the keyboard for that yeah again it looks a bit disorganized so i'm going to take till here and now i just see two bars in each uh, view pam 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 pa ra ra ram ta ra ram tam pam 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 pa ra 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 okay <clears throat> now i'm excited to finish this off i'm definitely going to finish this off so Here's what we are going to do. We are going to give you the MSCZ file for you to explore. You'll also get an MP3. You'll also get a WAV file, and you'll also get a summary of what we've done on our Patreon page. So do consider being a supporting member on Patreon for just five bucks a month. So coming back to this, just to conclude, just to give you a few final thoughts. once and and to also teach you rendering and exporting which is the finalizing kind of stuff you can add how many ever things you want and whatever kind of things you want so for example you can now add a choir so i can go here choral uh, vocals uh, and then you have all your choir registers you can bring them into one clef what else you can even add a ton of percussion you can add drums you can add guitars so this is not just for piano players i can do acoustic guitar uh, i need to press this arrow button then it goes into the 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 the, the stave and i would like acoustic guitar tablature so maybe i can take that in hit okay and for a guitar person i can off the top i can just copy the piano left hand into the guitar tab so you'll you'll get to read the tabs however i can build this from scratch i can even change the positions for the guitarist do you want him to start from the open string position or do you want him to go up to the fifth fret and then play it from there so you have a very guitar like view if you're doing percussion instruments you can also do uh the percussion clef so you can do percussion and you have a separate clef just for percussion so you can notate you can even do drum kit notation so it supports drums it supports piano it supports choir big band orchestra whatever you need to do so we'll give you this project try to build it further and let us know in the comments how you'd like to go forward with this do you want me to teach more muse score lessons or do you want me to get into some music arrangement some choral or some orchestral stuff let us know in the comments so before we conclude this lesson let's learn how to finally do an export let's just get it out into the uh, real world so to speak so to do that you go to file you hit export you can export either as a pdf file 
you can export the png images you can use it later in a in a software you can export mp3 you can export wave you can export midi midi can be imported into a daw and you can continue the production there with guitars and other real instruments you can do uh, music xml you can do braille for visually impaired people music xml then can be imported into other notation softwares like sibelius or a guitar uh, tab software or w- whatever would kind of be uh, compatible with this standard code okay music xml is like a word doc file for music notation you can kind of move it from app to app and if that app doesn't support it it's not a great app music xml and midi are the ways you would send to and fro uh, notation based data okay and once the job is done yeah you can send it off and if you want to do it with high quality you can use the muse score mixer whatever virtual instruments that you had connected will be available so whatever you own currently you can do your eq your compression your reverb sense delay you have your pan you have your basic volume so for example i can play this particular mute the metronome of course reduce the guitar maybe pan the guitar pan the flute so as you can see you have a lot of options you can do some mastering on the master just some basic stuff or you can render it to a daw or a professional software and do this work muse score is not designed as an audio editing or an audio production or a mixing mastering software but i don't see why you can't get a basic demo done using this app but it's not designed for that it is designed to help you use the notation medium for composing arranging transcribing and reading or just having fun with music so you so which would have probably been the world's first daw that uh, bach or mozart might have used if you ask me it's just the notation the pen and paper that's how they would have been arranging so this is probably the 2024 way of doing it so i would always encourage you to use notation using a variety of methods don't just read and play you should also be able to read and sing that's sight singing that's another chapter altogether also use notation to arrange to orchestrate to do choral arrangements and so on and so forth use notation just to improve your ear listen to pieces of music and transcribe okay right so hope you found this introduction to muse score useful and if you found it useful feel free to share the video with your friends family and other like minded folks out there who might be benefited and don't forget to hit the subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications thanks and catch you in the next one cheers